Dr. Cindy, it's great to have you here talking about spinal hygiene. As some of you may or may not know, this Saturday is World Spine Day. There are a couple of questions that people are dying to know surrounding it. So let's start off with the most obvious question. What exactly is spinal hygiene? Great question. So um, spinal hygiene is like the chiropractic version of dental hygiene. We all know that we need to brush our teeth you know, morning and night, every day. We need to floss. We need to regularly see our dentist to see um, if our teeth are in uh, good shape, whether we need to get it cleaned or not, whether we have cavities, for example, that need to be covered. And uh, spinal hygiene is a chiropractic version where you need to practice uh, daily exercises and practice good lifestyle uh, management, stress management, and regularly get checked by a chiropractor to detect whether you have subluxation or not. And so, really, spinal hygiene is the integrity of your spine and its ability to function and move the way it's intended to move. The alignment's meant to have, and we have like the correct postural curves. And well, when you have the correct uh, alignment and the correct curves, and then the structure is the way it's designed to, to be, then your spine will be healthy. And when your spine's healthy, your body's ability to communicate between the brain and the body will be healthy. You'll be able to function at your peak. You express your health and your life more effectively, and therefore, um, you'll live the way you want to live. Yeah. So that sounds like it's a really important part of our health. And not only is it an important part of our health, but it sounds like to me that it's something that really needs to be maintained to a correct state, and if not, really significant symptoms and consequences could arise from it. So taking a deeper dive into that, what would you consider to be a normal spinal hygiene, and what consequences could arise, arise from it? Awesome, that's a good question. Thanks, Monique. I'm really excited to be able to share um, my answer to this question then. I did prepare this post up with me today to uh, better answer your question. So, um, you know, x-rays is one way of looking at your spinal hygiene, but it's not the only way, but it's, I suppose it can be a good way. And so I just want to talk a bit about what your spine should really look like. And so what I already spoke about earlier was curves. So in your neck, you want to have a curve coming in like that. We call it the arc of life. Just move this. In your low back, you also have a curve coming in as well, and we call them uh, both of these curves lordosis. And in your middle upper back, we have the curve going the opposite way, and we call it a kyphosis. Now, the curve is really important because it means that the pressure and like forces can be like equally disperted, not disperted, dispersed <laughs> throughout the body. And when you have changes, then you can start to see that it straightens up. As for your spine from the front on, then we just want it to be just completely straight, like from top of the spine to the bottom, just looking straight down. And when you do have shifts of the curve from the front, then we call it scoliosis. Um, so yeah, you know, we call these changes subluxation, degeneration, and it can cause a whole host of things. So for example, it can exhibit symptoms like more pain. So for example, like you could have neck pain or back pain, or you could potentially have like uh, headaches or migraines and um, you know symptoms of degeneration can cause oh, many other affects many other aspects of your life as well um, but that's why chiropractors including myself we look at uh, how your body is and whether there's spinal hygiene and spinal integrity is there or not so what are the causes of neck pain back pain and headaches what are the long term long term effects that can arise if people don't know about spinal hygiene and whether they do have poor spinal hygiene, it goes ignored or neglected? That's a really important question, Monique. So um, earlier I spoke about the curves in your spine and well, when you lose the curves, the forces don't disperse equally and well, it dis disperses unequally and onto your joints and your discs. And so the first phase of spinal degeneration is where you can see the disc starts to um, wear out but then and become narrow and then in phase two that's when the bone spurs can uh, you know develop and start to change and you can start to get like arthritic degenerative um, changes and then it can really deteriorate more rapidly after that so the consequences of having this long term is well yes in the short term you can have like pain um, and you can like cover it up or you can you know ignore it you can just push through the pain take stuff like uh, anti-inflammatories, painkillers, or you can just simply learn to live with the pain. But um, well, that in itself obviously isn't health and it's not what chiropractors recommend. So what we, what we want you to do is like be aware of this and we need to often look um, into this and get a deeper understanding 
but the consequences of ignoring this like potential deterioration of these symptoms is the progression and they get worse and they deteriorate and you know you can end up with significant and a serious degenerative uh, condition so first of all yeah knowing what's happening with your spinal health um, and seeing what level of spinal degeneration you're experiencing uh, and we want to address that um, we want to address it early because degeneration is normal right everything in life has wear and tear but the issue really is when your spine is deteriorating at an earlier rate than it really should be yeah so how do i say this we can't ex i'll give you an example like we can't expect to look at someone who's 100 years old and expect them to have perhaps the exact same spine as myself so we just have to be realistic though um but in saying that yeah well the point i want to highlight is the issue is you don't want to be deteriorating at an earlier rate than what you should be. So that sounds really important for spinal health. As you said before, a lot of people live with it when in fact you don't really have to. Mm -hmm. So what can be done to avoid or prevent spinal deterioration? Well, a lot can be done. I'm really excited to be able to share my answer to this. So, um, you know, we could start by, for example, providing like postural exercises. But um, we can also take x-rays if it's clinically indicated to do so. But uh, if we do do so, then we are able to identify like what level of spinal hygiene um, or spinal deterioration uh, the body's at. And whether or not there's like curve changes or degenerative changes or uh, disc injuries. And then, well, depending on that, then we can start by getting the appropriate support. Whether it be like a pillow or uh, using a roll towel under the body to support the curves and change the curves and an orthotic which is a bit firmer than a roll towel we call it dinner roll um, or yeah continuing on with like exercises and stretching strengthening and conditioning of the body and the spine and ultimately the uh, whole nervous system really but yeah uh, a chiropractic program is designed to re restore the curves restore the function of spinal health and all of this is an integral part of like the, my recommendations to really allow uh, my patient's body to self-heal and move in the direction of uh, better function, better mobility, better structure, and well, I suppose therefore better health. Thank you so much for this, Dr. Cindy. It's really important for people to know that this has become such an epidemic out there. It's really important for people to know that this has become a really big problem. So what do you suggest people to do? Well, I want people to get checked because we don't know what uh, level of spinal hygiene that people are at and the only way we can know is by doing an assessment. So we do a full assessment here in the practice, we take clinical history, we do a full examination, uh, we check posture, we check the nervous system and if it is clinically indicated then we do refer for x-rays um, so that we can see exactly like, you know, what's happening, why it's happening and what exactly can we do about it. And um, I would encourage people to call the practice to get a spinal check, especially if you've been noticing that you've got like around the shoulders and you're slumping a lot, or if somebody's told you, hey Monique, you've got really poor posture, you have got to sit up straight. Um, but yeah, so if you, or even if like you're feeling like, you know, tension um, through your shoulders and your shoulders are shrugging if it's not growing forward. But yeah, or if you've been like sitting for a really long time because we're working from home, we're here on the phone all day. But yeah, it is, all of these things are like strong indicators that you are losing your postural integrity and um, that your spinal hygiene is like climbing and decreasing and affecting your uh, spinal health, which may be challenged. And um, I'd love for you to call the practice to give us the opportunity to be able to uncover what has happened to you and to give you an opportunity to support your spine, improve your health and reclaim your mobility and your independence, like which that I know you do want now and for into the future. So, we'd love for you to call Professional Health on 6299-2660. And if there's anything that we can do, or I can do personally, you know, I am here to serve.